Two, two, three, two, one. We are live. I think we're live. I hope we're live on YouTube. What's going on, guys? Connor Doobie here, uh, podcast host at B2B Mentors Podcast and Director of Sales and Marketing at Active Blogs. I wanted to drop in live here you here for you today to share a little bit of sales, LinkedIn sales navigator love, some tips for you. Uh, the tool can get complicated, it can get obnoxious, it can get uh, challenging to try to navigate all the time. And so um, I figured this would be pretty helpful, just a little step to realize that there are some phenomenal features in there that you're probably not taking advantage of. And I use Sales Navigator heavily for you know my prospecting, marketing, market research, and a lot of different activities I run in our business. Um, and, uh, you know, I just hear time and time again that people are using it and they're struggling to get anything out of it. Uh, real quick, by the way, make sure you're subscribed for more videos. We do live podcasts here. I share them out on LinkedIn. Make sure you're connected with me on LinkedIn, but especially subscribe for more when I drop in here and bring in more tips. So I'm going to bring you over to Sales Navigator and uh, get rid of my ugly mug here and show you what we're working with today. Sales Navigator, if you know, you're know you kind of new to this, is really an extended version of LinkedIn. It is one of the most powerful B2B sales and marketing tools out there. It gives you complete, unfiltered, unrestricted access to almost everybody on the platform. And again, there's a lot of tools and features. I'm not gonna go into all of them today, but one thing I did wanna point out here is oftentimes I find people are coming into Sales Navigator, right? They're filtering in their industries that they're targeting. Okay, so I'll just pick something rando here. They're picking in the areas that they wanna target. They're picking in uh, titles, for example. Let's say I wanna go after a chief executive officer. Yeah, that sounds good. So. When you have a list on Sales Navigator, what first off, what a lot of people do is don't realize that you can save these lists into your account after you've already done the research, already done all the filters, and you've gone through this process, and you have this big, beautiful target list here that you know if you leave the page, if you go somewhere else, uh, you may risk losing it. So the first thing I really want to point out here is that you have the ability to save up to 15 searches within your Sales Navigator account. So I can actually um, save in here, CEO you know, medical device is the industry. I can choose when to get updates from them and I can save the search. Now here's the key feature I really wanted to point out for you today. Um, when you save these searches, it's there's still a lot of like condensing down that you have to do, right? And that makes it very complicated because you're coming through here and you're reading through thousands of searches and you may have already identified there's maybe only a hundred key account executives or 50 or whatever that you want to be, you know, really targeting. So something that's really great here is you can actually tack in a certain number. Let's say I've gone, I researched Cogware with David. He wasn't a fit for, you know, one of the target accounts I wanted to hit. Let's say I'm looking at one source and Mo is qualified. Okay, I want to add him. Um, David, you know, he's someone who I want to be engaging with, not Kevin, not James, but maybe Scott. Now, what I can do here is if you select these, notice you have this great save to list feature. So there's a difference between saved searches in which I can go and pull up any saved search that I have in Sales Navigator, but again, it's going to give you all this data. And there's a difference between saved lists, which are actually much more targeted lead lists that I use for prospecting, nurturing, and you know, saving any, you know, let's say I get a warm conversation from LinkedIn. I want to make sure I don't lose or forget about that prospect. I have a specific list set up to save um, those prospects in. So if I go back to Sales Navigator again, go to my saved searches. I have this current list of safe searches called B2B Mentors Prospects. These are prospects that I've identified uh, via filters that I wanna look at doing some outreach to have as guests 
on our podcast, B2B Mentors, okay? So as I'm going through and I've selected through a few of these, um, what I've actually done is created a lead list uh, of um, uh, labeled as uh, B2B Mentors Prospects. So if I wanna add somebody to that list, I can just check off their profile and add them in, all right? If I wanna maybe condense and go page by page and maybe focus one for a week, then I can save these. I think this guy might already be saved, which is why he's not going in there. So I'll go to a separate page here just to show you what this is all about. I can select the whole page, which will select 25 people that are within here. And if I want to save them to this list to kind of cull them down further, then I can add them in to that list. So notice now I have 122 people in that B2B mentors prospecting list. Now, something that's really great with this is at any point in time, if I'm logged into Sales Navigator, logged into LinkedIn, I can head over to this lead list section. And in this lead list section, I can actually see all the saved lead lists. So I can see B2B mentors confirmed, um, active convos that are happening, prospects agreed to podcast, et cetera. So here's my podcast list. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Um, if you're if you're worried about like having some big grandiose CRM to run your prospecting activities and you have Sales Navigator, it may not even be a necessity, right? What I do is I typically use Sales Navigator for all of my cold prospecting to organize everything in here, but I use um, my other CRM, PipeDrive, is what I use for account-based uh, uh, CRM. And once someone is a warm, active sales prospect for our business, that's when I transfer them from Sales Navigator CRM into my main CRM. Because this tracks a lot of really great stuff. So if I'm in this um, tool here, and I'm actually gonna go to a page that I was mining, activity that you're doing with these accounts, like with these people, is tracked within Sales Navigator CRM. So notice right here where this says no activity, right, in my save uh, lead list, this says invitation sent three days ago. So I had sent this person an invitation to connect. I didn't have to go and update this. LinkedIn CRM automatically noted that I connected with Britain and it updated the outreach activity right here. Now I can also go in and add a note. So if I want to say, you know, at times I'll copy and paste what the actual message is, what stage they're at. Uh, if I want to come in here and just send them a direct message, although I would always recommend making an attempt to connect with your prospects, right? So here are some people who I've actually messaged. You can see that here. Message is received. Invitation sent. Invitation sent. Here's a note that I saved what the actual content of the invitation was if I want to refer back to it and she hasn't connected with me yet. Um, but again, I would always go for the connection request first because if I'm connected with someone, I can market to them throughout the history that we're connected. We may connect, be connected for the next three, four, five years. If I'm doing the other things right and I'm actually putting content out, engaging, um, then there's extreme value. A lot of people, what I see is they just go in and start messaging people, okay? Now, a beautiful piece of this is you can always transfer this to another list within your LinkedIn CRM. So let's say Lorraine has connected She's now agreed to be a potential guest on the podcast. Well, I can move this into another list that I have saved, which would be agreed to podcast. And then boom, it would be saved in to that list. I can always remove it, right? So if they're disqualified or whatever, I can always remove these people from lists, either this particular list, and then they get moved to, and they're moved to another list, or I can just unsave them from my CRM altogether. By the way, if you have any questions on this, please drop them in the comments. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if we're not already and, and send me any additional questions you have on this. This is just one small fragment of this whole tool, but I see a lot of people getting very complicated with this and making it too complicated or confused. And, you know, 
Um, I thought this would be a really great way to for you to realize that this tool is extremely pow powerful, extremely valuable um, to take advantage of. Now, another thing you can see when dates are added, invitations, you can see all the timestamps and get in here, poke around, play around a little bit. Um, I'm going to wrap up with that, but do let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns about using this tool. And with that, my friends, I'm going to wrap this quickie live up, make it great. And I will see you on the other side.